Good morning, everybody. I'll try to make this quick so we can all get back to talking about Vertigo displacing Citizen Kane from the number one spot on the sight and sound list. The following calls are taken from editions of Mail Call printed in the Herald Mail from July 23rd to August 3rd, 2012, which can be read online in their entirety at www.herald-mail.com. First up from Halfway. Just saw the picture of the supposed new senior citizen center at HCC. We do not want a Taj Mahal. We just want a place where we can meet and greet and eat and be good friends. Oh, this fucking senior center again. Look, here is the artist's rendering of what the new senior citizen center is going to look like. This is the pic that this caller is talking about. And that is the Taj Mahal on the uh, right. Yeah. And by the way, since that picture of the senior center was commissioned, the uh, county commissioners went back to the table and decided to have it redesigned to eliminate the second floor. A Taj Mahal. The comments some folks make in Mail Call never cease to amaze me, i.e. the caller who thanked Harold Mail for printing columns from George Michael and David Limbaugh on the same day so one could skip that page. Well, if you skip that page, you miss two of the best columns ever printed. And the comment criticizing Neil Parrott, calling him Neil the Petition Parrot. Don't you realize Mr. Parrot is fighting for your rights to vote on issues that affect all of us? Hagerstown. One of those parrot petitions will result, as regular viewers of my stuff know, in a referendum this November on Maryland's recently passed law legalizing same-sex marriage. Same-sex marriage is not an issue that affects all of us. It really only affects people who might want to get one. Unless you're the type of person who wants to marry a member of your own sex, it doesn't affect you at all. And why should a law meant to guarantee rights to a minority class be subjected to a popular vote again? Sorry, I must not have been paying attention when people brought out all the really good, sound, rational, not bigoted reasons for that. This is to the person from Fairfield, Pennsylvania. I don't know if you guys will print this or not, but he's talking in there about gays being coming out of religion. Well, religion says God told us in the New Testament a man shouldn't live with a man, a woman shouldn't live with a woman. What does that mean? That means gay marriage is wrong. Hagerstown. Whew! That was easy! No wonder you guys prefer this to thinking. For the person who wrote in about gay marriage and don't start your answer with Bible. Well, it's pretty clear I don't have to use the Bible, but my Bible tells me very clearly that marriage in Leviticus is between a man and a woman, and that anything other than that is an abomination. Read Leviticus and you'll find out. Secondly, the main reason that our country is in where we're at is because we are so immoral and have gone against every law. That is why we are in the condition we are. So gay rights has no rights in marriage. Hagerstown. Three things. First, you said you didn't have to use the Bible, and then using the Bible is kind of all you did. Uh, second, when I read Leviticus, all I found out was what Leviticus said. I didn't find out anything about what was right and wrong, because moral values are not objective facts. And even if they were, I doubt I would find too many of them in Leviticus. And third, what condition are we in exactly? Are things really that bad? I mean, sure, they're kind of shitty in some places, but they've been way, way worse. And I don't see how any of our problems at present are the fault of the gay population. But then again, I'm sane. After talking to middle school children who think that friendship is love and are easing toward the gay lifestyle, I let my mind go fast forward, and I see in ten years the gay lifestyle will come full circle. Is this the life you want for your kids? Warfersburg, Pennsylvania. Yeah, because close friendships among children are so gay. Um, look, I don't have kids myself, I don't really want kids, but if I did, I would want them to live lives where they weren't forced by law to abide by the rules of backward, small-minded cocksuckers like you. And that goes whether they're straight or gay. You know, John Kennedy once said, do not ask what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Now the way it looks, it's what can this country do for me because I want food stamps, I want disability, I want Section 8, I want anything the government can give me. I wonder what John Kennedy would think about our country today. William Sport. Sneering at impoverished people making use of the help that's available to them. 
That's classy. Also, John Kennedy started the food stamp program. It was one of his first acts as president. You know, sometimes all it takes to avoid sounding like an imbecile is five seconds of research. You should try it after you go fuck yourself. I'm a Pennsylvanian who grew up watching Penn State watch the program rise, become better and better. I watched administration that was reactive and not proactive. And right now I see people being reactive and removing Joe Pa's statue under the guise of being proactive. Okay, let's tear down a statue. How does that serve the thousands of students and people who've been influenced positively by Penn State University and Joe Paterno? Now when I look at the empty space where Paterno's statue was, all I can think of is the Sandusky stain. So what was gained by removing his statue? Hagerstown. A statue is something that we erect to honor someone. It's something that we put up so that we'll remember a person that we admired. That's what a statue is. And what was gained by taking Joe Paterno's down from Penn State? Well, a lying coward who acted repeatedly to protect a serial child molester doesn't have a statue anymore. That's what was gained. I got droned as far as I'm concerned. I was droned tonight. I live close to the Hagerstown Airport. The Piper Cubs fly out here on Sunday. They're loud, they make a lot of noise. When the jets fly in and out, they make a lot of noise. When something flies over that makes no noise, that's a drone. This thing was way up high, but it flew over without making any noise whatsoever, right over my house, Hagerstown. Well, holy shit, I hope they don't see this in mail call and know that you ratted them out because they might send another drone to blow your house up this time because the government is totally spying on you. I mean, either that or you're just a sad, deluded, self-mythologizing number six wannabe who needs to get over himself. The presidential election in November should be a no-brainer. If you want your country back, your morals back, everything good about America, you'll vote for Romney. If you're satisfied with the way things are going, you'll vote for the other person. I'm personally not satisfied, so I'm a big Romney fan. I don't care how much money he's got anywhere. Who of you that's reading this wouldn't like to have all that money? Sharpsburg. Who wouldn't like to have all that money? So, all of the ethical concerns, all the political and philosophical disagreements, all the statements and behaviors that make Romney seem like a spineless, pandering hypocrite, not to mention all of the positive arguments that fall in Obama's favor, of which there are a few, all of that just completely goes out the window because, hey, come on, who wouldn't want to have all that money, right? As if the only possible objection that people are raising to Romney as president is the size of the guy's wallet. Give me a break. That is so stupid, I would be ashamed to think it with Glenn Beck's brain. And finally, from Washington County, If guns are outlawed, only outlaws will have guns. Think about it. You drag out the most hackneyed gun bot cliche there is, presenting it like it's some irrefutable, self-evident profundity, and then you exhort me to think. Yeah, that's irony. Bitter, too. Thanks for watching.